me great pleasure to call upon our Vice Chancellor and Principal, Professor Paul Goff, to say a few words of welcome. Professor. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, good to see you all here. We're launching the 24th year of gallery shows here at AUB, which is phenomenal. It takes us back a long, long way. So 24 years of a gallery exhibition run by these wonderful people that we know and love. And just go back on the last 12 months. So the last 12 months you've got a terrific exhibition from Scotland, from the um, National Museums of Scotland. We had Body Beautiful, Diversity on the Catwalk, which had five themes, you'll remember them. Size, age, gender, race and disability. And then that was followed by an exhibition that uh, I had a little hand in and, and colleagues from Foundation here had a great part in, which was called um, Crossing the Line, which was about urban art, street art, from alley into gallery. And not only did we put this on here, and that was a, that was a real showstopper of, a, of an exhibition, we took it into town and it was on show at the giant gallery in Bobby's. And again, attracting a lot of people in, a real kind of proclamation for the role that universities play in the civic life of a city region. So that was just recently gone, you'll remember that. Next 12 months, the team have put together another great programme. We have a wonderful show around film, photography, uh, the diaspora, around hidden histories, led by uh, uh, Sean Natali Sobers, I know very, very well, and that will be a really interesting exhibition. We have a show originated here by researchers called um, Pen Plotters, Machines That Draw. I wish I could draw like a machine, but machines that draw, and that originates really from work that's being done here by colleagues in their research and their practice, but also links to our innovation studio. We had an event there last night led by Lucy and by Dan and by Asha around the great work we're doing with our resident innovators in that studio. And if you see all the leaflets, you'll get all of the background, including an extensive social media. I think that um, I think that Will and uh, and um, Violet spend all their time putting work out on social media, onto Instagram and Facebook, because it's very important we reach out in those different kind of dimensions. We'll also be having schools exhibitions. We put a terrific show on recently that Alex and Kim colleagues put together with schools, with communities that we work most closely with. Our courses will be shown here, and alumni is a show of photographs by Gabriel Bush that will be on fairly soon as well. So as ever, a really dynamic programme, very important for a, a wonderful arts university like ours to make sure that we're displaying, we are explaining, we're entertaining and informing. Which sounds a bit BBC, doesn't it? But there you are. Uh, that's what we do well and that's why you're here now. This show, as with every single show, is done in collaboration with so many different people. Tonight, again, with our wonderful courses, with events management, Kevin is here, with costume, and colleagues are here from costume, with dance and performance. But at the heart of it, it is part of our civic, our civic agenda, our civic role that universities shape and change lives and create opportunity. And it aligns very, very closely with the values the organisation spends so much of its time living up to around inclusivity, collaboration, and a kind of a sense of uh, making the best and the most of what we do so well. It's only possible, of course, because of the good people, often the great unsung people around us, so campus services, marketing, the gallery team, and a new member, April Hicks, who's here with us tonight. And of course, this wonderful team behind me, who are my back line, as it were, uh, which one's Sharon Robinson. Uh, I've got Susan, Louise, Pam, Bridie, Catherine's over there. And we will get a chance in a second. Round of applause for these great people. These are the ones who are all here. We've all got each one's got a 20 minutes of each lined up, so you know, refill your glasses. Talking of glasses, isn't it extraordinary seeing a flat bottle? A flat bottle there? If it had beer in it, I'd understand why it was flat. There's a joke there somewhere. Um, but apparently you can post them through letterboxes, which seems an odd thing to do with a bottle. But that again shows a kind of level of innovation that rhymes and chimes with what we have here. A couple more people to thank, Joe as ever with his design, um, uh, the volunteer Phoebe doing so much work, Eliza taking the photographs, right there you are, taking the photographs, and Marcus on the decks here, and Marcus tells him the music we're listening to, or we'll be listening to, or we'll be enjoying, go on, Organic House, Organic House, that's not Greenhouse, that's Organic House, so thank you very much for that. And on the back there, the mind map created by Bridie, is the most extraordinary piece of visual representation of a, of a great idea, a complex idea. And you'll see there's a number down there, 11425, which isn't 
my passcode to my Lloyds bank account. It's um, the number of objects that we have in the collection, 11,425. So fantastic work by Bridie there, and she'll talk to anyone to tell us the great way she approached this and how she's made visual what we have in this remarkable collection. To tell us more about that, over to my wonderful colleague over to Thank you very much, uh, Paul, Professor Goff, and Vice Chancellor. So, welcome to this exhibition, Designated Design, a plastics collection of national importance. My name is Anna Farthing, and I'm the Executive Director for External Engagement here at Arts University Bournemouth. And this is the first major partnership project between team members in the External Engagement Directorate since I started in post just six months ago. The External Engagement Directorate includes this Museum of Design and Plastics, which we call London, the Gallery, the Library, Archives and other collections, the Palace Court Theatre, our Innovation Studio, our Research and Knowledge Exchange, as well as our Access and Participation and our Short Courses. Bringing these cultural and knowledge sharing assets together signals our strategic direction towards being an open organisation that engages fully with the civic agenda and offers something of value for everyone, whatever their interest. In this exhibition, Designated Design, a Plastics Collection of National Importance, you will see selected highlights from the AUB Modit collection of over 11,000 objects. Take a moment to look at the wonderful commissioned graphic downstairs, created by our commissioned artist, Bridie Cheeseman, and you'll see how this extraordinary collection has inspired research and innovation and creativity and has made an impact in the wider world. And please do save the date for our seminar on Thursday the 1st of December, when we will be discussing designation with the National Motor Museum, the Bath Costume Museum and the Bristol University Theatre Club as well as premiering a new film about Modit by George Chan. So I've said designation a lot now, haven't I? What is designation? So designation, to be designated, is a very prestigious award. It is bestowed by Arts Council England to celebrate exceptional collections and to raise their profile nationally and internationally. Designation recognises that the objects in a museum's care form a collection of national importance. MODIP was awarded the status of designated Outstanding Collection by Arts Council England in January 2022. I take no credit, I just vastly reflected. <laughs> to gain this special accolade, the museum's staff had to engage in a lengthy and in-depth two-stage process. And this exhibition, is a visual representation of the second stage of that process. It's a long document, but what we wanted to do was to reconnect the objects to that second stage. And the second stage demonstrates the national significance of the subject of the museum, which is design and <coughs> plastics, the outstanding quality of the collection and its research value. So we hope that this exhibition will pique your interest and you'll feel curious to discover more. We have deliberately not overloaded the exhibition with labels, so you'll be encouraged to explore the rest of the collection by scanning the QR code, which is on this uh, postcard, and you'll see it on the wall around the exhibition. And that QR code will take you to the Modip website. Here you can explore the digital catalogue and find many more resources. Over there you will see some wonderful artwork by Mariella Neudecker, um, which was inspired by this collection. <coughs> and the piece in the case there are the, is, are the pieces that, that are photographed in the bottom right hand image. And um, there's a, it's a sort of memorial piece for somebody who is very special, who helped our curators to understand plastics when they were first setting up the collection. If you'd like to buy a book of artwork, I'm Mariella Nordica, inspired by the collection. Violet tells me that tonight they're on special. <laughs> <coughs> After visiting the exhibition, I urge you to visit the library and the Modic Museum there, which is the exhibition is entitled Endurance. And Endurance shows how good design and the right choice of use of plastic materials can help humans survive 
in all kinds of situations at sea, in the air and travelling at high speed. And of course, collections need specialist care by skilled human beings in order to survive and to release their value to researchers, creators, visitors and students. Here at Arts University Bournemouth, we are extremely fortunate that the Modic collection has been curated and conserved by a highly skilled team led by Professor Susan Lambert and Dr Louise Dennis. Please join me in giving Susan Louise and Catherine and Pam a big round of applause. And it is my pleasure to give you a few thank yous. The exhibition has been created through sustainable partnership. We have not bought new stuff, we have borrowed from other museums and other heritage organisations. And it is partnership that will enable us to be more sustainable in the future. So we particularly like to thank colleagues at No Fort Museum of Coastal Defence and the Russell Coates Art Gallery and Museum for the loan of exhibition furniture. And we look forward to reciprocal arrangements with our culture and heritage colleagues across the South West in the future. Thank you also to our wine sponsor, Accolade Wines. Their eco-flat bottles made by Patamama are made from 100% recycled PET and significantly reduce the carbon footprint of wine thanks to savings in weight and energy. And if you particularly like your sample of the Merlot or the Chardonnay, you can buy some more in Tesco or Co-op. <laughs> so I'm going to hand over now to Professor Susan Lambert. And I just want to say again that on the 1st of December we'll be having a very special event in which we will be celebrating, among other things, Susan's retirement. But please, um, warmly welcome Professor Susan Lambert. Hello everybody. My, um, I think what I'm going to say is probably rather more personal, and perhaps partly because I am after 15 years leaving this wonderful institution. And so I'd like to thank Paul and Anna for the very nice things they've said and Anna for the lovely puff she's given what I consider the wonderful Modic team. It's been a really very exciting journey. It began with a collection that was a general design collection and in 2007 we decided to focus it on design in plastics. I think some people thought this was rather an odd thing to do because you know, plastics aren't always everybody's favourite material, but I think that their pervasiveness and provocativeness has actually been a great help to us. And, I mean, if, if nothing else, it's made the press, I think, more interested in us than they would be otherwise. And we've had a few opportunities to be both on television and on the radio. And, you know, I think that actually helps a very small museum like we are. And I think with the recognition that we have now got, um, about six years ago we got funding from Research England, we're one of only 19 universities to have their museum honoured in this way. And you know, it's, it it's really is a decent amount of money this year, it was a little over 85,000. Um, and combined with designation about which a lot has been said. I think we're really beginning to find our place in both the research and museum arena. It's been a team effort over 15 years, and I have to say, my Modic colleagues are just quite wonderful. They're clever, caring, and committed, and I'm going to miss them terribly. But um, I think all things, good things come to an end, and I feel with designation actually very happy that this is, is the right moment for me to hand over. They, and especially Louise, very much helped by Catherine, and I think with some very helpful nudges from Anna, have been responsible for this exhibition. It's really very different from what Modit usually does, and I think it's absolutely marvellous. I'm absolutely thrilled by it. 2007, we said we wanted to become designated and we didn't look that much beyond that because it seemed so impossible and, and now we're there. But I hope and believe it made it will continue to grow in its reputation and its importance. And um, you all have my very best wishes 
for this exciting new future. Thank you. Yeah, so the exhibition is all about Modif and the importance of the collection. Um, it looks at the wide variety of objects that we have uh, and also how we can help research um, and uh, engage with lots of people. of MODIP uh, designation is a really fantastic, um, interesting, accessible exhibition um, looking at the role of plastics in our lives and the role of MODIP in exploring that. It's a very lively and interesting exhibition um, with, uh, with videos, with music, uh, with really interesting objects from representing the history and the future of plastic and it's open to everybody so do come along uh, and have an explore it's a way of allowing the, the, the Museum of, of Design and Plastic to burst out of the confines of the, the, its usual space and actually really come to life in a very lively and engaging way in a much larger gallery exhibition so a fantastic insight into the really important work of uh, this fantastic museum um, which has a unique collection of plastic objects and artefacts and uh, it's really worth having a look at from the, the quirky bottle, the flat bottles, um, to the an opera uh, that actually is inspired by the history and the future of plastic. So many different art forms all relating to the role of plastic in our lives so do come along and have a look at it.